What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we have a great show for you, so stick around. We're going to talk about everything that is happening right now around the planet. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. What is going on, guys? It is Adam and K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. If you are new here, remember you can always go over to marfugalnews.com and get a full bibliography of every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we show you here today. Again, you can head over and he uh, look for today's thumbnail. Today's thumbnail, of course, super soldiers are real. <laughs> Uh, they just said what? And again, that is talking about the accusations about the United States actually making some very funky people. So we'll talk about that and much more. You can find the links and everything, the sources, uh, all down uh, at the bottom of the website. So again, you can go back retrospectively and read where we got this and check our work. Uh, we make this archived so you can search it through the database. If you have a keyword, if, if you remember an event that happened, we most likely covered it in the last four years. So also remember that once you hit a yellow bar, that is the overflow content. That is the stuff that is either sensitive or we couldn't fit in the show. There is a ton of stuff down there. So remember to go check that out. All right. And then uh, let's bring in my co-slash internet brother, Dex James. Dex, what is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugal fam. I am doing just fine. So today is a call-in show, so if you've never been here, you are going to see a scrolling number down at the bottom, and that is 224400-MARF. Uh, or two two four four zero zero six two seven three. Now, when you call that, uh, you'll want to press option four to get through uh, the phone tree uh, directly to Dex, and then Dex is going to put you through to the show. Now, you want to get those calls in right now, early in the show. Uh, again, if it's probably past about the first uh, 35, 45 minutes, usually we have our lines full. So make sure to get in now. That's again, two two four four zero zero marf and that number is scrolling down. You can uh, be calling about any of the articles if you want to go uh, touch on the website and talk about some of the subjects that we are going to talk about today. That's great as well. Uh, otherwise, if you have a sighting or a video, we can actually get that on our video on, on our uh uh, on our live stream right now. So make sure to call in if you have some crazy sighting or something that everybody should see. Uh, extinction threat may be greater than previously thought. No, uh, new global study finds the global extinction crisis underway may be more intense than previously thought as humans continue to tear up land, overuse certain resources and heat up the planet. New research led by the University of Minnesota indicates. Now, remember, this is from the point of view of this report that came out. Uh, again, there are all sorts of uh, different uh, parties that are involved in either trying to convince you one way or, or the other of what is going on right now. Uh, we're just uh, covering this because it is a major uh, report and they may just use this to uh, change things. So remember that nearly one in three species of all kinds, 30 percent face global extinction 
or have been driven to extinction since the year 1500, according to a new survey published in the journal uh, Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment. That's significantly higher than prevailing global estimates, uh, and the findings surprised lead author Forrest Isbell, uh, associate professor in the university's Department of Ecology, Evolution, and Behavior. He said that one of the reasons is that it takes more insects uh, it takes more insects and other lesser studied species groups into account. So they have actually added the, the whole windshield theory into this. And we talked about that just the other day about how, you know, insects are disappearing worldwide. And that's not coming from me. That's coming from uh, essentially every single country you type in, you'll say insects are disappearing in just put in pretty much every country, uh, any uh, any of. Uh, state province or area and you'll see uh, that there's studies behind all of these and it's like why are they disappearing that is a good question it says prevailing global estimates have ranged from 12.5 percent across all species groups to 25 percent of the well-studied ones such as animals and plants he said uh, quote he says i honestly figured it was much lower isbel said i would have estimated it was about 20 percent Noah Greenwald, Endangered Species Director at the Nonprofit Center for Biological Diversity, called the numbers quite alarming. It says it took many years for the change to become prominent household concern. So again, this is a push uh, for uh, that, that movement. It says that the extinction crisis is really part of the parcel of similar scope and severity of this great change that is happening to the, uh, the weather and everything else. So I do want to point out that there are some things that people don't argue about. Uh, as far as, you know, that things are definitely changing. I think the big argument is is whether it is, you know, something that happens or something that is made to happen or something that uh, we are, we are responsible for, right? Uh, but most people do see the change happening. And I would say even on, you know, both far end of spectrums, most people think that, you know, hey, uh, there might be a chance that even if this was some sort of natural thing, uh, that it's not going to be very fun for human beings. Um, I personally think that I have seen change, and I've I've covered a lot of things, and I've uh, talked to, to a lot of people around uh, my country and people around the world, uh, especially uh, you know covering a, a far you know Australia, UK, Mexico, uh, Portugal. We've talked to all sorts of people about the the weather and what's going on in those places. And everybody says that they're breaking records. Things are happening that have never happened before. And of course, there's theories about what is driving that. Uh, but again, it, it seems like there are definitely things happening to the very least. Um, now, if you want to call in on this or any of the other stories here, then please give us a call at 224400 MARF. It says, quote, the majority of species on the planet are plants and insects and other invertebrate animals that we know so little about we cannot even determine the extent of which they are threatened, she said. And it says, yet those are the very species which help purify our air, filter our water, maintain the health of our soils, pollinate plants. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We need for food, uh, fuel and fiber provide medicines to hundreds of millions of people. So those are essentially some of the most important groups and they don't have the studies behind them because everybody will, of course, donate to uh, have you do studies on on pretty animals like giraffes and, and uh, you know, elephants. Uh, but as far as, you know, who wants to donate towards uh, keeping mosquitoes alive or or for the bees, right? Says Hoover Dam explosion captured in terrifying video in Nevada with tourist herds saying something's blown up. Now, this video has been going around uh, for the last uh, 24 hours. In fact, it was I, I think it was about midnight last night. Uh, I believe it was about midnight last night when we first heard about this. Uh, I uh, or, or was it noon? It was a uh, it was 1234. I ended up finding out about this today. And what was crazy about this is we actually just had a conversation with somebody about Hoover Dam being a big uh, area of concern because of what is going on right now. And I also talked about uh, with Lake Mead being so low, it's at historic lows right now. And uh, this person actually suggested that maybe they're lowering these things because of dams and maybe they know something we don't or something is, you know, possibly going to happen to these dams or someone wants to do something bad to these dams. Um, one thing I do think about is how T-Man, our, you know, previous president, talked about 
how there was this big threat from the I country in the Middle East, uh, the ones that are trying to get nuclear right now, and how they uh, basically took out Soleimani. U.S. took out Soleimani, their major uh, Kasim general Soleimani, and they said that he had planned for the United States something that made uh, 2001 of September look like chicken feet. And that has just rattled in my brain for the longest time. Uh, and they did take Soleimani out, but that doesn't end that plan. It also uh, was a botched kind of double takeout, uh, you know, event where they were going to drone sc- strike uh, Col- uh, Soleimani and his second-hand man, and they actually missed on the second-hand man. So whoever was next in charge is still alive. So that was not. Uh, it was a. It was a great win to take out Soleimani, as they said. Uh, but they they missed that second guy. Is that guy continuing these plans? Now, with this, they say it was because it was uh, some sort of electrical thing uh, that the that it, it maybe it was overrunning. Again, whatever they're going to publicly put out, I'm sure, uh, you know, that <laughs> there's there's a chance that it may not be what it seems to be, right? It says the Boulder City P- uh, Police Department confirmed to the U.S. Sun that they had units en route to the scene following an explosion. A tourist visiting the site captured a video uh, showing the fire that may have occurred in a building near the dam's base. However, cops uh, have yet to determine where exactly in the facility was the explosion took place. And again, this was, um, I, I don't know if we actually had the update on this. Uh, let's see here. But it, it basically happened in one of the, and I believe they do tours of that area, or maybe they don't do them anymore, but I, I thought that they did tours of that area and where these big uh, kind of turbines are. Um, they, I don't know exactly what they are saying this second about it, but whatever they're saying about it, could that have been a, a result of a hack? Could that have been hacked? Uh, was it you know, something that could have been planned as a bigger thing? Of course, many people were like, oh, dude, it was nothing. You know, oh, they said it was just a, an electrical failure or, or a, a, you know, a cord, the, the rubber wore off or something and it caused a shock and it blew it up. But again, this is Hoover Dam. It's a major target. If you take out that dam or if something happens and, and that dam goes down, then it's a flood for a lot of people. Now, as far as how low Lake Mead is, I don't know how, how much uh, less, you know, of a disaster it would be if, if it did it now, but... This definitely had the the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. Uh, What do you guys think about it? We have attached the video over on our website. Again, this was a uh, screenshot here from uh, a woman, and you can hear them in the background saying an event just happened. Uh, You know, we're going to have to keep moving or something like that. Uh, So that is one of the main buildings. Oddly enough, this is actually... uh, this looks almost exactly... They definitely modeled the uh, Call of Duty... uh, you know, blackout or whatever it's called after this little place here. So inside there are these huge, huge turbines the size of a small house, and they all line up on both sides of the dam. And one of those supposedly had an issue. I just wonder if, you know, there's some sort of, uh, I guess, cover going on. What do you think? Let me know in the chat below. And thank you, Stephen McMahon says, hundreds of First Nation kids at boarding schools found in graves. Okay, so something like that I would love to see the link on. I don't want to share stuff that I don't know about. And again, it says, I think failed attempts to create super soldiers. So I do know in a lot of cases we've covered some pretty crazy stuff. As far as the super soldiers thing, I think that most people knew that this was some sort of thing like this was going on for a long time. Uh, we do know that all the way back to Adolf, he was doing stuff in Germany with, of course, you know, tinkering with people. So we'll talk about that later. We are being accused of making super soldiers uh, here in the United States and doing it, basically making these guys just, uh, you know, supermen or something and, and really messed up stuff. Uh, Southern Dixie, uh, Dixie Prepper, thank you so much for subscribing. Tang Talks, again, thank you for being one of the last ones out. Min Mofro, Joseph Newhouse, and everybody else that just popped in. Thank you, guys. Um, I am going to open up the chat here in just a second. Thank you, everybody that just popped in. Looks like we have Donna Tellericio. Uh, I think I said that, right? Tellir, Tellir, Tellericio. I believe that there's many targeted people. Uh, Jamie Roy says, I can be your Superman. Uh, Jim and Rose uh, says, hey, fam. Steve Canyon, USA has... (laughs) You almost got me with that one. Uh, Yes, they do. 
<clears throat> uh, what was that the the uh, shameless episode where he uh, gets the the kid Carl gets kicked out for thinking that uh, that that meant that the soldier transferred from another unit and he sticks up for him and it, he finds out that it was because it was a, a you know guy girl situation that was a pretty funny episode uh, in fact I don't think that that episode even just two years later would even fly. Uh, with all the stuff going on. Trinity Red or Blue Pill Hi Ho Kermit the Frog here. What's going on? CJ Blaze is in the house. We've got Rapid Fire, Jason78. I love Carl. You know, so many people relate to Shameless because there are so many little things that probably almost all of us have had at one time or another. Um, you know, that reminds me a lot of, of some of my family. I know that's for sure. Uh, if it reminds you of yours, or if you don't know what Shameless is, definitely uh, go go check it out. It's pretty messed up. But it's so messed up that it's realistic. Uh, I think it wasn't an accident, says Oki Khan, about the, uh, of course, the dam. Yeah, I don't know what it, what exactly is going on here, but I, I do see that, it, you know, something like this, this isn't as bad as it can get. Um, just think about if something was organized and every dam across the United States just went kapoof. Um, what, you know, what if if we had something set off in every state? They don't even have to have nuclear anything to do havoc. And that's what's really scary. And with every all the push down on people, I'm the one thing I'm kind of worried about is people pushing back and just, you know, going way overboard on it. Uh, when you push people down and push people down and push people down, uh, crazy things can happen. And, and uh you know, people gather and people make stupid decisions and, and, uh, not a lot of, not a lot of people think about the lives that are affected by it. Uh, Joseph Newhouse, again, thank you for uh, being a, a supporter last show. Be Real Beast. I called my dad who worked for DWP and his coworker serviced the dam for 20 years plus. They confirmed it was leaking cooling oil. Then the transformer failed, causing the fire, a uh, common failure in the department. So personally, you know, that's, hey, that sounds like a reasonable explanation. I just say, you know, question everything. Uh, as far as that, I've never seen a cloud like that and an accident like that out of uh, Hoover Dam. Is there another story like this? Uh, put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. If you have seen something like this happen to a dam before, and I'm sure something like it's happened, uh, let me know. I know that there's been fires at some dams and things like this, but this was... Uh, this was pretty damn insane. That was a pun. It sounded better in my head. Survey raises serious questions about the future of the all-volunteer force. MilitaryTimes.com now. Uh, pretty crazy stuff. Remember, you can call in on this or any other uh, article that we're talking about. Uh, tweet, video, no matter what we're showing you, give us a call at 224400-MARF. That's again, 224400-6273. Very easy number to, to get down. It says the results of a new survey and of military and veterans' spouses uh, includes details of financial difficulties raise concerns about the future of the military, said the executive director of the organization that conducted the survey. It says that fewer military veterans and spouses are likely to recommend military service. According to the findings, the reasons are related to their own well-being, saying Shannon Razadin, president and executive director of the Military Family Advisory Network. It says, quote, at the end of the day, the families are having a hard time making ends meet. And that's affecting their overall well-being. <clears throat> it says we see the connection between well-being and loneliness, uh, well-being and housing, well-being and food security. When you layer that on top of the fact that fewer people are likely to recommend military service, it paints a very clear picture of concern related to the future of all volunteer force. Uh, again, which, you know, if you choose to be in the military unless there's a draft. So... Uh, many people are not doing that, and that also kind of is reflected by uh, breaking records as far as almost every branch is offering uh, absurd amounts of money and absurd kind of gifts to join uh, to get, you know, that to dangle that carrot in front of people. But to be honest, it hasn't gone as much as you think. Like they say $50,000. 
I remember when I was in high school, way before all of this inflation and everything, it was like there was like thirty thousand dollars in college, or maybe it was eighteen thousand. It was something, but it was it hasn't gone up as much as you think it would be. You'd think it'd be like a hundred thousand dollars, because a hundred thousand um, dollars, you know, for whatever for the service that you put in, it's it's not even. Uh, it's not, it wouldn't last you long depending on where you lived. It says this is the fourth survey fielded by the organization generally every two years. This time, the biggest surprise, said resident, was the drop in the percentage of survey respondents who said that they would recommend military life from 74% to 62% in just two years. So that's, that is a huge drop. And when you're actually survey, surveying uh, thousands and thousands of people, uh, almost 9,000 people, and a huge 12% drop, that is not good. That means there's a lot of people hurting. Uh, this is kind of obvious, though. <clears throat> it says nearly 60% of the, the respondents overall were between the ages of 25 and 39. It says, quote, This was troubling for us, residents said. It was really the fact that families do not feel like military life lines up with family life. Well, I guess yeah, it's how you look at that sentence, right? If somebody is gone all the time or... Um, I guess if you're on base, whatever it may be, it says based on their answers, the reasons were related to frequent separations and the fact that military life is not conducive to family life. Well, kind of a no duh there, but uh, I guess it's even getting worse, especially when you're talking about how expensive everything is getting and somebody is gone. Uh, the spouse, even if they are getting, you know, some sort of uh, paycheck to get by, it's not enough anymore. <clears throat> so people aren't happy. I hope that's fixed. I hope they, you know, for all the millions, if we are sending up hundreds of millions, if if not billions of dollars somewhere else, why aren't we sending uh, extra money to every one of our veterans and every one of our uh, active service members? Does, does anybody see what I'm saying on that? Uh, 400 million that just got signed a check. If you split that between our entire active force, you know, yeah, somebody has to pay for it, pay tax, but... Why aren't we paying higher taxes so somebody like that or somebody that gave their arm or somebody that gave their life uh, so their spouses and kids can live comfortably? I, I think that a lot of us would feel good about that, but they don't want to do that. Uh, they, they don't take care of our veterans like they should. And I know this because we have a ton in, in our audience. Uh, we have uh, over thousands at, at this point of, of military and active veterans here. Um, and I know you guys are not taken care of like you should be. And I'm sorry if that offends some people, but again, I think you guys should be taken better care of, uh, just period. And then Millie directs a review of U.S. Chinese military contracts amid warning that Beijing poses a national security threat. It, it's been the writing on the wall for a very long time, and we have been talking about this way before, and just watch the pattern. This is going to start popping up more and more and more. And since we were talking about it when everybody was friends and everybody's cordial, we told you, look at what they are doing, what they are physically practicing for, uh, the ships they're making, the uh, the forces that they're making, the drones that they're making, uh, the moves that they're making. Uh, Xi is definitely preparing for a conflict with us. That is a fact now. But when I started talking about it three years ago, a lot of people didn't. They were like, oh, yeah, sure. We get everything from them. How would that even work? Guess what? We're not getting everything from them right now. That's how it works. Uh, the ships would just dry up. You would stop getting containers just like you did during CV, which if you kind of looked and now look at the accepted fact that something may have been made over there and started the 2019 stuff or may not have. Who knows? That's how quick we can stop getting shipments from them. Remember, they went from 100% of their flights going out of, of Xi's country to 2% at, at, at for like a year. They were at 2% of <clears throat> all over all flights. So the hundreds of thousands of flights that were flying around all day, every day, uh, they were down to 2% of their overall flights at one point. Uh, containers were stacked up and, and sitting and waiting, and nothing. Webcam showed there was nothing leaving the ports. That's how uh, something would happen. It's almost like it was a dry run for when we aren't going to get anything. I think about that uh, on a regular basis. If if people don't see what is coming, it's very obvious. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people are like, oh, no, that's just a distraction. And I think that that is even a distraction is how 
Uh, Xi, and, I, and I'm telling you, when you go against that country, they have over a million people online. I've been talking, you know, I'm not exactly a fan of their country, and I don't say good things, and I notice it. And the first person I talked to was a YouTuber that covered, you know, kind of stuff against that. And uh, it totally makes a whole lot of sense. If you talk badly about them, you are going to have just random accounts pop up, all sorts of trouble. And I, I really do believe that this is starting to happen more. Um, Serpenza, Serpenza ZA, uh, he gets all sorts of different things happening to him. Uh, really, really crazy stuff. They even tried to honeypot him with a, uh, a beautiful, uh, you know, G's country girl. Uh, they've done all sorts of things. He, he made a whole video about it. Go check it out. But again, uh, when you don't talk positively about them, they have a million man uh, group online uh, going all over the place. And it's, it's starting to get freaky, to be honest. But Millie directs this review, and for them to say this, this is huge. Uh, again, more more coming out about this. It says, Xi has been on the rise economically and militarily for more than a decade. They've become more bold in the Pacific. Uh, Millie said in the written statement to CNN, maintaining open lines of communication and managing competition will reduce strategic risk. The U.S. military's focus is on modernization and readiness. Our network of partners and allies is a source of strength. How's that working out with, of course, Vlad? And just going in there and, and saying, hey, you're not doing this. Or if you're going to let them take it, then uh, what is it, what's going to happen when they go past it and go into Poland or somewhere else? Uh, so very, very freaky stuff going on. And again, I hope people are paying attention. You that have been watching for three, four years, you guys have seen this coming way before mainstream. And now mainstream is going to start covering it. And people are going to be like, oh, mainstream says this. You're not saying anything new. The difference is we were saying this three years ago before anybody was saying it, before CV. And now it's it, it's getting so obvious that it is put in your face. I mean, come on, their embassies are burning documents. When did that happen? Oh, yeah, that happened in Japan right before they attacked us. They're practicing in bays and ports that are identical to our bays and ports. They are practicing destroying carriers with the exact layout of our carriers. And people aren't putting two and two together. I mean, and yes, they have a lot of pull in the United States. They have a lot of pull in media. They can get their money anywhere. They can, you know, they can buy people. They can buy anything. So just remember that. They, they are the only country with over a million people that are in their military that are just online uh, doing narratives. It's insanity. So just uh, keep that in mind. All right. And then before we talk about G threatened strong measures if Pelosi visits Taiwan, uh, I do want to remind everybody, uh, of course, of our sponsor, Energy. And uh, we're going to get our first caller on. It looks like we're going to be turning the phones on and we already have Fran on the line. So Dex, while you get Fran on the line, I'll just remind people, if you haven't already, make sure to go over to EMP Shield and go check them out. In fact... Uh, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. You can get a $50 off discount on each device you get. And EMP Shield is actually the same company uh, that just out of nowhere during T-Man's administration got called up and ended up being part of the DHS EMP Resilience Report. Uh, this uh, device and this company has now been used by agencies like DHS, DOD, and the Demso team. Uh, when we started with them, before all that, they were a, a small company, small building, making them by hand out of Kansas. Now they're still making them by hand uh, in Kansas, but now they have a lot more, uh, a lot more space and uh, much bigger buildings now. So again, now they have contracts with, uh, like I said, DHS, DOD, and agencies like that, and they're on the Demso team with the Texas Grid. So essentially, the entire United States is in some way uh, working with this company and others to help protect the grid, but they are way behind. If you want to protect yourself, realize nobody's going to come and save you. You can get protection against all three phases of an electromagnetic pulse, uh, E1, E2, and E3, and you can protect your generators, your cars, uh, and your house, your boats, your motorcycles, uh, even your energy solar generator uh, with an EMP shield, and it will ground the signal of a CME or an EMP in less than 500 trillions of a second before it fries your device. It is a great deal and 
It is helping the channel. It is also getting yourself something that would possibly save your life or make your life a whole lot easier after everything hits the fan. Uh, but again, it also has its uh, practical reasons as well. If you're in the Midwest and have lightning, Make sure to go check it out. 100% American made. Every single screw and nut in this thing is made here. Veteran-owned business. Go check it out. Marfuglenews.com slash EMP. All right, let's get our first caller. Fran, Fran, do we have you uh, live on the show? I am here. So uh, so this is your video. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load this uh, video here. Can you explain what we are looking at? Uh, what you are looking at is a view from Henderson, Nevada, looking to the south southwest sky towards Black Mountain, and um, I set the camera. I actually had three cameras aimed that day on Sunday uh, in the early morning in several different directions, capturing the storm as it rolled through. And in this particular capture, um, there appears to be a lot of energy being generated in that area, as you can see, um, which is a perfect video to follow your EMP uh, and to. So um, yeah, I, I put a warning up there just because it is, it does happen very fast. And I have a son that has problems with seizures, so I wanted to make sure I put a warning out there. But um, incredibly in a thoughtful, couple of those frames way. when I slowed it. It's something that nobody would think about, but it's something that obviously if you have issues with that, uh, now almost everything has so that kind of warning, especially video games. Um, I, I have a, a cousin as yeah. well who has, has them. So thank you for doing that. Um, so this is pretty crazy. Uh really uh and it's not the first time i've captured this effect i've i've been capturing this for probably since what 2018 honey i believe yeah since i moved here um several years ago about five years ago and there's a a little bit of a close-up image of what it looks like something was highlighted i'm my i'm uh i'm trying hard to to choose the right words it just it looks like something was highlighted um artificial well i myself i'm i'm i don't i don't think that's god and that's my opinion of course that's a great way to put it um you, I'm, you don't think I'm, it's natural I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit um anxious Whoa. right now i do have i myself have some issues with anxiety and Part part of that has been having to keep a lot of this pent up because I've been censored so heavily on the platforms. I've I just recently was uh, completely deactivated and removed from Facebook, and all of my family is back in Michigan. I'm here in Nevada, so I would like to say hello to all of my Michigan um, friends and family because I know you have a lot of fans back in Michigan, and I know several of them that uh, you're their only news source. So hello to all of my Michigan. Michiganders back there too as well, but um, I just there's a lot of other activity that goes on in the skies around here that I've captured multiple times, and and in particular in this same direction as well. And there's a lot of patterns, and there's a lot of signatures wow. and things that become recognizable after you capture them so long and after you study them so long. So at this point, I can. I can just look at the sky and see a cloud structure and say, oh, okay, well, there they are. Hi. You know, <laughs> so um, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed by what I've captured. And I just want to have more people um, seeing some of these things so they can kind of train <laughs> their eyes and their mind to see it and accept it. And then we can, you know, kind of move forward collectively. But right now I feel like I'm kind of in my own little box in my own little world. And there's all of this pressure on the outside keeping me held in that box. So this right here, having the outlet to speak to you 
is like therapy for me. So I thank you for giving me the platform and giving me the opportunity. I really appreciate you guys. Oh, no, no problem. And by the way, so, and Facebook is basically connected to everything. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, it's yeah. like after the congressional hearings, people realized <laughs> that they were not only monitoring uh, what you were doing outside that platform once it was installed, uh, they like they could monitor your text message. All we all know that because you know every, anybody who had Messenger uh, basically said, "Hey, yeah, you can look at my messages." But they were looking at uh, what other apps you were playing, how long you were playing those apps, how long you were doing this, how long you were doing that, uh, what fo- your photos were, and all this and that. Not just the ones you uploaded, but the ones that were in your camera roll, uh, what websites you were visiting. And then they would tell those other websites, they would to go to all these other places and share that and do this and that. And you could purchase that, that data. Um, as far as like the... Um, uh, with with uh, Instagram and all these others, they're all doing the same thing. So I, I totally uh, understand when you get removed, it's crazy because it's just across the board. That's why we are so careful. I just wanted to point out this Jacob's Ladder one, or this is what you described it as, um, really trippy about this. Like I've seen the bands on, on videos before, but this one has like a double strike and it almost looks like a water slide or something. Uh, look at that. Uh, both yeah. are perfect zigzags. Yeah. <laughs> It, it looks like one of those kids' slides. I, yeah. What a trip. Yeah, I, that, that same direction was where I happened to capture what I believe was a, a CME as well. I don't know if I can say that. Um, there's additional videos that are kind of embedded and buried in the algorithms that, you know, I, I've attempted to share, but... That particular capture there from Sunday was uh, well, quite overwhelming. And there's, like I said, I have hours of footage looking toward the east over Lake Mead, uh, foothills and towards the Hoover Dam where I've got uh, still frames and images that show what looks like a, a perfect coil. It's it's uh, it's overwhelming. And like I said, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to share and, and every opportunity that I get to share is a blessing for me. So I appreciate it. Well, so. th- <clears throat> thank you for calling yeah. in. And Fran, uh, the video will be over on our website. So everyone will be able to access this uh, at marfuglenews.com. You just go Very to the good. bottom of the page and it will link you right to YouTube. And you can go watch this uh, and subscribe to I'm Still Standing 2 Sky Anomalies. Sorry. I just had a yeah. hiccup at... <laughs> the same time as, uh, oh my gosh, my eyeball almost popped it's out. It's my fourth channel. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm still standing too. That's, uh, well, yeah, if you had four, wait, you, did you say you have four kids? I can see why your name is still. Yeah, it's my fourth channel. Oh, fourth channel. <laughs> I thought I, I thought you said fourth kid. I'm like, that's why you, you're, uh, I'm still standing too. Yeah, it's, uh, I could see why. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. Just let folks no, I'm still standing. Okay. Well, you have a wonderful night. And uh, again, Fran, great call. Thank you so much. And don't be a stranger, okay? Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Heads up, y'all. And a big shout out to Michigan. Michigan, you guys are awesome. I love the folks in Michigan. Uh, and uh, all, especially I love the people in Ohio. By the way, I was watching, a, I want to say it was a Yellow Wolf video. And there were people in the comments and they did the OH and it was like uh, 150 comments of, you know, the first thing I went to do is respond. And I saw, Oh my gosh, everybody responded. Uh, they did O dash H and then everybody was I O. Uh, I mean, it was just, uh, if you don't know about the whole Ohio O H I O it's a, it's a huge thing there. Uh, but again, they're, the people from Michigan are the same. Like anybody that lives there, they represent. Like it's like, yo, Michigan. Um, I love the the vibe in Michigan. I love the vibe in uh, Ohio. I love the the Florida vibe. Uh, the Florida man vibe is pretty awesome. People. Uh, we have a lot of people from those three places. So okay, uh, let's get back into it. Uh, we have G threatens strong measures. And I hate these words. You guys know if you watch my show, I hate how they always say like, oh, we're, you know, going to very harshly react or or that's even harsher than sometimes they say. 
you know, we will take resolute and strong measures should the Speaker of the U.S. House Representative Nancy Pelosi uh, proceed with reported plans to visit Taiwan. Uh, that was, of course, the foreign ministry in Xi's country. Uh, and it said Pelosi was second in line to the presidency. Again, if if uh, both the VP and the, the, the president uh, were somehow taken out, uh, she would be the third in line successor, uh, which is crazy to think about, really is. Uh, whose second line is due to visit the self-governing island uh, Xi claims as its own territory in August, according to a report in the Financial Times. She was originally scheduled to visit in April, but had to postpone after she tested positive for the CIV, for the, the thing that we've been covering our, our faces for. Now, what's crazy is I remember when she got that, and of course, every big politician at that point, when they got it, we were like, what? But they got all four of those, five of those, seven of those things. And I remember that at the same time, the VP, I believe, got it and somebody else got it. Uh, Dex, and, and again, I, I don't know if you're on the phone or not, but do you remember when she first in the news that it came out that she had it? A bunch of people had it. She was at a party with a uh, VP uh, with uh, and with the president. And pretty much this whole group of people had it. And we were saying that it was weird. It was almost like they... Uh, had kind of an excuse to just stay out of the cameras and to to you know hide for a little bit, and this was supposed to happen much earlier. So I wonder if this is a big deal, like that, that they would want to put it off or something, uh, because it's it's uh, supposedly going to cause problems, or at least that's what they're going to say. Yeah, I, I, Adam, I do remember that, and it was it was a big deal. Uh, it wasn't just her; it was a lot of people, obviously. But yeah, and we thought for some reason that that was you know potentially a reason for no one to show up uh, or to at least be in in their office, so to speak. We specifically said about her because she was planned to go there, and then she came down with it, so she didn't. And we were thinking, like, was that just an excuse for them to like not deal with this right now and not deal with the the kind of lashback from? Uh, from, you know, from China, but who knows? It says that they have vowed to annex uh, Taiwan by force if necessary, which most of all of you know this, and it says and has advertised that threat by flying warplanes near Taiwanese airspace and holding military exercises based on invasion scenarios. The same invasion scenarios, by the way, I just want to point out that a ton of them are being done in exact replica of our West Coast. Like, how are people like not, you know, more people not talking about that? Uh, you would think if they're just so openly planning on doing something like this. And then, <clears throat> by the way, everybody knows they're go trying to go uh, go take Taiwan. With Taiwan, they made an exact replica of the actual capital area of it. The building and all, it, it's a the exact same layout. And they've been drilling on a daily basis, taking it. Doing every scenario. And we know they're going to take Taiwan. At some point, they're going to try or they're going to do it by force or they're going to try to do that. Well, look at what else they're practicing. They're practicing in areas that look like our San Francisco Bay. They're practicing with areas that look like uh, some of the Washington areas. And that's exactly the, the, the playbook that Japan did. Japan flew, uh, actually trained all of their pilots for the Pearl Harbor mission in, in an area that looked exactly like Pearl Harbor. I mean, this is kind of one-on-one stuff. So I, I, I think that everybody's looking at Vlad, but Vlad's just kind of underneath uh, Xi. Xi has now turned the entire world trading with them. It's, it, uh, if, if you haven't seen that map of, of how the entire world was blue and trading with the U.S., and now, over since 1979, when they started doing the capitalism thing, it's like, boom, it just slowly turns, and then boom, 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 over the last 15 years, it just all went red, meaning that the entire world is trading with Xi. Why? Because it was cheap, and these corporations, every country has their rich and elite corporations that do not care about you, do not care about anything except for that bottom line, and that bottom line was very easy to ship overseas, manufacture things there, and guess who got rich off of it? Not the not the people over there. The government and their the select few that they let uh, be successful. Uh, again, more billionaires are produced there than here now, which is just absurd. 
And then it says, watch the U.S. and its Pacific partners obliterate an ex-U.S. frigate with bang-bangs and missiles. So, again, now they're practicing all sorts of weird stuff. Same thing they were doing in uh, another time in history. More than 25,000 personnel from 26 Pacific countries are taking part in the Rim of the Pacific, the largest maritime military exercise in the world. So just to uh, repeat that, uh, it says the largest maritime military exercise in the world, the rim of the Pacific in the waters around the Hawaiian Islands this month, which funny enough, uh, Vladian ships are actually, you know, as of about three weeks ago, were outside Hawaii, 10 miles off the coast. We actually took a caller from uh, Justin True, one of our longtime Fugal fan members who lives on the island. And he actually went out with his, uh, I want to say it was his dad and brother, and they saw it firsthand, and they didn't realize what it was at first. And then uh, all of the, the helicopters circling it and everybody watching it, they realized, oh, crap, that's that's Russia. It says, during the U.S.-led exercise, units from Australia, Canada, Malaysia, and the U.S. sank the USS Rodney M. Davis, a decommissioned guided missile frigate in 15,000 feet of water, 50 nautical miles north of Kauai. It says footage released by the U.S. Navy shows the Oliver Hazard Perry-class frigate being barraged by missiles and boom booms before sinking. The almost 500-foot-long, 4,200-ton frigate entered service in uh, 1985 and was decommissioned seven years ago. It was named for a Marine who received the Medal of Honor uh, posthumously during the Vietnam War. It says a sinking exercise, or SYNCX, they really called it SYNCX, like it's some sort of crypto. It says, is a regular feature of the biennial rim of the Pacific exercise. Participants sank a decommissioned landing ship in 2018 and a uh, decommissioned amphibious cargo ship in 2020. The drill allows participants to hone their skills in a live fire setting. Uh, said Royal Canadian uh, Navy Rear Admiral Christopher Robinson, and it says Deputy Commander of the Rim Pack Combined Task Force. There is nothing that really replaces the training value of opportunities such as this, which enable us to test our weapons and their associated combat systems with a much more realism as possible. It says before the sinking exercise, the frigate went through a thorough cleaning process to remove all environmentally harmful material. (laughs) <laughs> so basically they took out anything that could leak all over the place, like massive amounts of oil or something or, you know, pol- uh, polluting, uh, you know, whatever they keep, lithium, whatever, you know, batteries on board or whatever. So I guess they uh, ju- they must have tugged it out there and it had no fuel in it even. And then they just blow the crap out of it. This is like, you know, when you're a kid and you take your toys and you you know tie a bunch of firecrackers together and make some M80s and just blow the crap out of it. It sounds fun, but it's also kind of a it's been showing you the last 3 years they've been doing this specific thing and sinking these boats in a live fire kind of uh, situation. I would say I'm paying attention. I don't know about you guys. And uh, again, We are going to be going over to the phones here in a second, so whoever is on deck, it does look like we have uh, before Scott D. Daly, first-time caller. Uh, We'll be talking about the Amish raid by U.S. Marshals. We'll talk about that here in just a second. First, though, Vlad says it's losing because UKR has experimental mutant troops created in biolabs. I did this again. This is from uh, some mainstream sources here, and again, they, their side is saying that says nearly five months into its senseless conflict against UKR, uh, Vlad has concocted a wild new explanation for why uh, Kremlin keeps uh, losing and plans for a quick takeover fell apart so spectacularly because UKR troops were turned into superhuman killing machines during secret experiments in American-run Mm-mm, of course. So they're saying that there's beakers and that they're making all this stuff. I wonder, though, how many people actually uh, believe what he's saying. Now, 
I know that all of the big major powers have experimented with this, and they'll never tell us about it, I'm sure. It says, never mind the myriad reports of Vladian troops refusing to fight by the thousands, sabotaging their own shoddy equipment, and even deliberately wounding themselves to abandon the conflict. They're saying that, that Vladian soldiers are basically like tagging themselves in the foot so they can get out. <clears throat> it says, Vladian lawmakers claim the real setback for Moscow was drugged up UKR soldiers. So, mutant soldiers. Uh, that claim was made Monday by U.S. Uh, two Vladian lawmakers heading up a commission to investigate uh, these. And I'm going to highlight this. This is a hot topic after, uh, of course, what has been going on. What do you guys think? Do you think this is happening? It, it, it's, it, it's nothing that would surprise me. And I am going to go out on a, a wing here and I'm going to say I believe that almost all of these countries are doing something like that uh, from cloning. I mean, we know that cloning is going on with animals and things and they can do it with humans. They've they've done I'm, I'm assuming they've done it, uh, but a lot of that stuff won't be declassified until way, 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 way later. Right. Because it's a uh, there's a bureau, bureaucratic you know, red tape. But in countries where there's less bureaucratic red tape to cut through, you think that they're not doing this? And for the, the countries that do have the bureaucratic red tape, would they use a smaller country to do something like this? Say, one that's not exactly connect, you know, connected with everybody. Uh, one that is completely you know, separate from like NATO or separate from this and have them do something like that? Just a question. I'm asking questions about what is going on. And uh, I just wonder if there's any validity to it. Konstantin Kordashev, the deputy speaker of Vladivostok Federation Council in Arena Yorovea, deputy chair of the state Duma, touted what they described as bombshell findings from the investigation. It says testing of UKR POWs, so these are prisoners of conflict, blood, they claimed uncovered, uh, uncovered a range of diseases that suggest that they were secretly <clears throat> experimented on for military purposes. What's crazy, Dex, and what's crazy to me is like some of the nasty stuff that we worry about catching, some of that may be used to actually give to people to make people worse. And that's like the sci-fi plot of, of every film. Yeah, exactly. And this is not, this idea of making super soldiers is not new. We've reported on it numerous times in the past. I know one time uh, it came out of the U.S. intelligence that uh, the G's country was trying to do it. And I want to say that I'm looking looking up now. It was back in late no, no. 2020 or into 2021, right? There was and lots bio specific. Of, it's, yeah, it, it's been, weapons. it's been talked about um, in, in, in labs and stuff like that for decades probably um and but we've never actually seen it we've just heard r rumors or reports or more likely we hear one country pointing a finger at another like the u.s intelligence pointing over at xi uh, back in 2020 2021 about this topic um so yeah this is um it's it's not unheard of but it's not actually been seen either so <clears throat> well do you guys agree and i would love to hear your opinions on this i'm going to go over and pop in uh, thank you, by the way, Tina Marie, for the thank, uh, super thanks over on More is Coming Out. And then mind-boggling, James Webb Telescope's first picture, Kim Hoffman actually uh, did a super thanks, said thanks. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I just hearted your comment and replied. And then uh, thank you again, Tina Marie, uh, Levi Hep, Alvarez, and Main Watcher. Thank you so much for your super thanks. Uh, just want to remind people, too, uh, that... Uh, when somebody gives you that mafia badge, make sure to thank them. That is actually a really cool thing that they have over there on DLive is the fact that somebody can gift you a uh, mafia badge. Um, so, And then Derek McLovin, thank you again for being one of the bigger supporters the last week. Uh, if con was the opposite of pro, then is con uh, Congress the opposite of progress? That was the last comment on uh, Vanished. And then, excuse me, Joseph Newhouse uh, thank you, and I, I don't know if you ended up doing a video on the Kratos thing, but I f maybe I've, I forgot to actually uh, mention that to you. 
And then uh, Derek McLovin, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Michael Scott. That's funny. Uh, and then uh, Stephen McMahon, since 1950s, teenagers taken ultra ed education taught every way to, to bang, bang, taught remote viewing ways to enf- enhance consciousness. Education, MK Ultra education. What do you mean by like have taken ED? Maybe I'm missing the, the point of that. And then uh, let's hear much love, Fugal Fam. I'll have to reread that in its full context. Much love, Fugal Fam, listening tonight, but can't be in chat. Zen Wen, no problem. And it was nice seeing you over on uh, Survival Game again. Uh, Janet Ruth Haynes, thank you so much. Uh, and then Mid Mofro, liked and shared. Uh, peace, love, and Jesus. Well, Mid Mofro, I appreciate that so much. Uh, Janet Ruth Haynes, again, welcome, welcome to the fam. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, Be real, beast. There are paper fibers in what's called the bulkhead, coming soaked by oil, then ruptured, then the oils burn. That's why the dark smoke. Uh, Be real, beast. So, uh, Be real, beast is actually referencing the fire in Hoover's Dam, saying that there are paper fiber fibers in what's called the bulkhead. Becoming soaked by oil, then ruptured, then the oils burn. That's why the dark smoke. Because uh, I think somebody else said that the dark smoke was because of something nefarious or whatever. That is another explanation. Um, I guess I, I looked at it and I, I didn't even question the, the dark smoke. Uh, and then puns usually do sound better in your head. Christy Magdale. Well, yeah, I, I should have probably had a big mag delay before I said that. <laughs> and before we talk about the White House says that Vlad is planning to annex large swaths of UKR. Well, no. It's kind of like, duh. Uh, we're going to get our next caller on. And I do want to remind folks, if you haven't already, make sure to go over and check out marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can get 72-hour supplies of food. You can get a one-month kit. You can get a three-month kit. Everything is packed in there, so you basically have everything you need uh, to support yourself uh, food-wise, and it's all very easy to make. You add water, and you have yourself an amazing meal. Again, freeze-dried food essentially is a process where it takes out every single ounce of moisture out of the food, and it preserves, and it's an incredible way to, to keep food good for up to 25-year shelf lives. Again, it is an amazing thing to have. Um, certain things you can steam back, you can cook back, you can cook back with sauces. It's a, really great. So it, it keeps a lot of the flavor in it rather than, say, dried uh, again, there's a big debate between dried and freeze-dried people. Uh, but again, there are technical reasons why freeze-dried always kind of wins in that department. So if you want to get yourself some freeze-dried food, there is low supply and extreme high demand. Uh, it, it, they, it's, even one expert that we covered last month said that in the next six months, they believed that we wouldn't even be able to get freeze-dried food, which is pretty nuts. Uh, but that was based on a, a pattern that was, I believe, a temporary pattern on how people were grabbing it up. It is still in short supply, and it is still in high demand. <coughs> so go to marfuglenews.com slash prep, and you can get it, uh, as if actually, $150 off on that three-month supply. That you get by going through us. Uh, again, make sure to go over there, marfuglenews.com slash prep. Also check out the Alexa Pure Pro. You can get iodine tablets. You can get lighting, stoves, fuel, and lighters, all sorts of great stuff, and survival books, because you won't have Google when everything hits the fan. All right. And then, uh, Dex, we have our next caller, and it looks like they are live. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Scott, you are live on Marfugal News. Calling from Utah, what is hey. happening? How's everybody doing? We're doing good. So uh, you wanted to talk about, and I actually have a video here, uh, do you want to explain what that, we're looking at? The, the I have more information that I found out after I did that video. It's actually an Amish farmer who got raided by the USMS. Uh, he faces $250,000 fine and jail time. Lose his farm trying to process his own meat. 
Wait, for, really. for processing his own meat? What? Yes. Yes. The new order, Judge Smith, the, the judge that did this, gave an order to force authorization for the U.S. MS service to permit to, to make an unannounced visit to his premises. So, so, and this is, isn't that protected somehow in the Amish community? Like, don't they have some sort of agreement to do their way of life? Uh, I, I always thought that there was some sort of, I, I don't know, or maybe it was unspoken rules or something. I, I don't know. Unspoken uh, rule, but the, the U.S. Marshals went in and they were authorized to do anything necessary to uh, do this. Were they saying it was because of a health reason or why? So they just didn't want them being self-sustained? Like, they don't want them cutting They don't their... want people to be self-sustained anymore. They're, they're attacking our food supply in that way now, I think. So these Amish... They have a garden. They, they, they were basically... They had their own cows. They were processing those cows, butchering them, uh, doing everything, the entire nine, you know, themselves... And they raided them for that. Yes. Wow. It, they they are they're starting to attack our food supply in a different way now. After not only their farms are organically grown, but by anyone that has a garden or backyard might be attacked as well. And saying, hey, you can't do this. Well, they they have stopped people they're from. They have stopped people from doing, you know, uh, gathering rainwater and things like that in certain states. Uh, they have certain rules about certain things, but uh, I, I'm just surprised they... Is there any any other reason, like, they didn't say that they had, like, drugs or something or it was a cover for something? Uh, is there any, you know, cover story no. that, that goes against it? No, it, it just says that the federal judge, Edward Smith, signed an order... Requiring Miller to pay a fine of two hundred fifty thousand, plus fourteen thousand four hundred thirty-six of government expenses for failing to abide by U.S. Department of Agriculture regulations covering the slaughter and sale of meat. Failed to pay within thirty days, the fine could be increased, or he could be even jailed, according to the order. Oh, okay. So now I understand how they were able to even phrase that. It's because this family were butchering, processing it, and then selling it to the other Amish folks in that town or wherever they live. And they're saying that it wasn't by the standards of the FDA or whatever, you know, the, the industry yeah. standards. Wow. So, I, okay, I, I do see how they could legally go in there. Um, but I guess that's just something that I haven't really seen before. I mean, have they been doing this the whole time, and just now they're they're starting to crack down on it? Now they, they I think they just now started to do this. Wow, that is that's uh, that is impressive. The name that's, of the guy's name of the guy that owns the farm is Amos Miller. Miller is prohibited from selling meat on the farm. He, uh, doesn't do if he does that he's going to be threatened of a hundred fifty one thousand five hundred dollars per day fine does that so what do all of the other Amish folks do do they have to just go and go to the local store uh what if it's too far away to to drive I mean they don't drive to take their horses if it's too far away how did they you know I I don't know I guess no and nobody's gonna stand up for I, I don't know either it, it just it's just something that blew me away when I saw it. Well, good catch. Uh, Scott D. Daly, it looks like you uh, have started a channel here. Uh, it, we, we've actually uh, linked your video talking about this over on marfuglenews.com. Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Uh, we will make sure to attach uh, your video and any other uh, appropriate information on this on our website. Okay. As I... And my call, I'd like to end my call like I do my videos. Say, be safe, be ready, be prepared. God bless. Laters. Now, all right. Thank you.
Did you did you hear that? It's like the be safe, be prepared, Marf out, but he says laters. I like it. Be safe, be prepared. God bless. Laters. That's awesome. Well, I wish you luck, Scott D. Daly. And uh, again, it looks like you're talking about some great subjects there. Georgia Guidestones, Saudis, Vlad and G. We've been fighting a nuclear conflict since 1935. Well, good call. Thank you so much. And thank you for, well, I guess thank you for calling in to us and, and giving us your time. Your time is valuable, Scott, so I appreciate that. All right, and then the White House says that Vlad is planning to annex large swaths of UKR. They had their smart de- department, and uh, I guess they gave everybody a raise there, and uh, essentially it, it even improved their IQ. And now they've got themselves a full-blown think tank. See, this think tank in the White House is so incredible. It put together all of the information that is available, and they figured out that uh, Vlad is trying to take over UKR. I guess I'm little irritated that these guys probably get paid a hundred dollars an hour for this uh, assessment the u.s has intelligence indicating that the kremlin is reviewing detailed plans to annex multiple vladian controlled regions of ukraine it says that white house national security spokesman john kirby said on tuesday uh, it says why it matters the four regions curse on uh, zaporizhia donetsk and luhansk are contiguous and together would connect Vlad with the Crimean uh, Peninsula, which Moscow occupied and annexed in 2014. Annexing them would mean claiming large swaths of UKR's territory and fundamentally shifting the outlook for any peaceful resolution for the conflict. It says the big picture UKR officials have been warning for months that Vlad's shadow government in Kherson was issuing Russian passports man, uh, mandating the use of the Vladian ruble and potentially planning a referendum on joining uh, Vlad's country. The plan Kirby laid out, which echoes U.S. intelligence warnings made in May, would even uh, be even more drastic. So, uh, again, this is exactly what they did before when they came out with the U.K. Uh, intelligence that said that they were going to go in, which, again, we talked about this a year before the invasion started when they started doing drills. And we straight up said, this is a drill, but they're going to do this in the near future. And then it happened. You look at the exercises and the drills, and depending on their size, a lot of these drills and exercises, you can really tell that something is that something is, is being planned for or something that is just kind of being a, a, a war game scenario. You can tell the things that they believe are the biggest possibilities because those take uh, precedence in these all, all these drills. Uh, Vlad did gigantic drills before this and brought over 100,000 troops to the border of UKR last year, way before anybody was talking about this. Uh, It was not water cooler talk. Nobody was even talking about it. Uh, We were, of course, and and, uh, once again, it's all come through. So I guess take everything with a grain of salt and and question everything, but at the same time, if, if this is true... Um, Dex, I wonder if they would take just enough to where they would have full access to uh, the peninsula and kind of just have that area and then leave the rest to them. What do you what do you think about that? Well, I'm sure they want to at least uh, claim what they've already um, moved in on. Right. And and at least get that to then be to become part of their country. So then they can no longer have to say that they're trying to occupy it. So I think that's probably their their first order of business. This is very similar to what I guess happened, uh, but this is taking a lot longer. Uh, the last time when I think they did this with uh, uh, Crimea, right? So um, you know, it, it it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a think tank or you know a special group in the in the administration's cabinet to figure this one out. But uh, but apparently that's what they're coming out with. They just want to be able to say the plan before it comes out so then later they can use it and they can go, well, look, we, we put this uh, report out. John Kirby said this before and now it's happening. So now you need to believe us on this other thing that we just completely uh, made up. <laughs> All 
By the way, that is John Kirby. I just played a clip of him. That was not me. That weird... That's that's how he talks. That was 100% truth. No sarcasm. Rhiannon S. says, Hey, me and my family will be in Seattle August 12th to go on a cruise. We'd love to meet up and take you guys to dinner. How do we make this happen? Uh, Rhiannon S., by the way, I guess you're going to be going down to like the market, I would assume. That's where all those cruise ships go. Uh, what a cool area. I would say make sure. Uh, don't know how that would exactly work out. I'm not exactly so close to Seattle as I was, but I would say... Um, that make sure to go to the Pike Place Market, make sure to go down to the Magic Shop on the third floor down, uh, if, especially if there's any kids in your family. <clears throat> that was a ma- literally a magical place for me when I was a kid. Um, and a lot of people don't even realize that there are multiple floors underneath. It's kind of like the end of the movie, uh, what was that, Till Dust Till Dawn, where at the end of the movie it shows the bar is actually like a huge pyramid, uh, like Egyptian pyramid that goes down the mountain. Um, it's kind of like that, you know, when you go downstairs, you don't realize that there's floor after floor after floor on the waterfront that it it just goes down and all these crazy little weird stores and make sure to support some of those little stores and then make sure to support, uh, the main level with all those people, all those people, that's not a swap meet. That is actually people making their own art. Uh, everything there on that first floor is handmade or the farmers that are there, they all, uh, grow their own. Uh, flowers they all have their own farm so that's not like a corporation thing it's not like they bring them in for the tourists they the 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 families actually do that Uh, I know people that are down there that make candles Uh, they actually hand make them out of beeswax and they keep the bees and do everything by hand I mean there's just amazing artists down there so make sure to support them Uh, but you can also email me at adam at marfuglenews.com if I am around Seattle that around then, um, I do, I've been thinking about a lot of, you know, folks that I've missed when they were in Seattle. Um, I, I do know that I would love to meet more people, meet a, a lot of you guys. And then UKR conflict, uh, Vlad to visit Iran in rare international trip. Now, Dex, I'm going to bring you in on this one. Uh, the I country, and I'll highlight this for anybody that's new that doesn't understand what I'm talking about. Or I ran to the store is going to get a visit from Vlad. Uh, this is this also raises the hair on the back of my neck. Why does he need to do so? Um, I know that they have some sort of financial kind of you know back and forth, but I wonder what's really going to happen in that meeting. Well, uh, it, right now it's under the guise of, you know, trade and, and, you know, grain or things like that, like improving trade. But, you know, and, and obviously uh, Vlad has to worry about that with all the sanctions and he's trying to find as many ways as to to generate GDP and get revenue for his country for their products uh, that they actually produce. Um, but there's no no reason to think that it's just going to stop with that we've got to you know understand that they do have an alliance that there is you know a lot of uh um you know allies that or that this is one of their allies that they they work with so we'll have to see you know what could come from that or what may strengthen of that and if 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 they take a position uh, in support of the I country against is and what's happening right now with the conflict around, um, you know, their advancement of uh, creating uh, nuclear weapons. Um, the other thing that's that he's talked about, though, is he's also trying to get a, a chance to meet with a or, or sorry, Erdogan um, out in Turkey. And as you recall, uh, everyone will recall here that they are a NATO member, but they're also probably the one that is the most uh, they drop their, you know, they dropped their uh, their objections to uh, Sweden and Finland joining NATO. Isn't that right? Yeah, Out they of did nowhere. drop it. They dropped it and allowed them to to proceed. But then just recently, they made a, a, a slight statement that says, "Don't forget, we can always disrupt this if we want." And uh, that was in the last few days, I think. So, you know, that statement, along with potentially this meeting coming up, if he does make the trip over from the I country and heads over to Turkey to meet with uh, Erdogan, then that would uh, that could signal some other changes that may be happening there as well. So we'll have to see what happens. Well, we'll, de- we'll definitely 
Uh, the, the one, the weird thing about that is the Erdogan or er, er, Erdogan. <coughs> he is the one. And then, by the way, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei from the supreme leader of that country, that is where they shared that video, uh, the the simulation or the, I guess, the CGI video of a drone driving into T-Man's golf course uh, and taking out our former president. That was the, the video was shared on the official Twitter of, of uh, the Supreme Leader. And he's now meeting with Vlad. So it's, and we took out uh, the Supreme Leader's, you know, Major General Salim uh, uh, Soleimani. So what the hell is going on here? And if there was like a huge attack that was ever done by the I country, what if like this meeting in the, you know, this is like a meeting where they talk about it or, or go over something they're about to do, or they get backing or they get money or they get, I don't know, some sort of nuclear part from Vlad. And by the way, Vlad is going there directly. Um, don't they have restrictions on like kind of monitoring what, what, just a question, and this may sound stupid, but could Vlad and his, uh, his, I guess his uh, crew, if they come in, do they go through the same security measures that anyone else does? If he flies straight from his country to uh, Ayatollah's country, could he bring something with him? Could they give them like a, could they just give them a nuke or would that be trackable by satellites or is there a way to track if a nuke leaves a country and goes into another one? Because if a normal plane goes there, I would think that, you know, maybe they could catch it or something. Like, what what's stopping any one of these countries just by saying, hey, here here's just a full fully made, here's your, uh, you know, nuke? Is there anything that stops that, do you think? Well, I, I would think that you wouldn't do it in, in a way that was so obvious that people would want to look. So, um, you know having it tag along with the leader going to your country. Um, yeah, but it could be probably, multiple planes. There's always yeah. a, a whole menagerie of planes that go with. And yeah, I'm just envisioning some, you know, halfway dilapidated truck that's got a, you know, cargo in the back of it covered with a couple of sheets that skirts <laughs> across the border. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and literally skirts, like pop tires and everything. Uh, yeah, well... Something about this just doesn't sit right. So we'll we'll follow it and we'll see what's going on. And then UKR destroys two military ammo depots, hurting Vladian morale. That's, of course, according to Newsweek, at least. It says that UKR has recently destroyed two of Vlad's military ammo depots in UKR's southern Kherson region, according to a UKR military spokesperson. Uh, Natalia Humunyuk, the head of the United Coordinating Press Center of Security and Defense Forces of the South UKR, which, by the way, that's one of the largest titles ever. Head of the United Coordinating Press Center of Secretary and Defense Forces of the South UKR, was asked during an interview with the Iranian news agency Ukrinform on Monday about the reported destruction of an ammo depot in the city of Nova Kakova. Is that right? Kakova? In the Kherson region, Humunok responded that in addition to the one in Nova Kakova, what have cool names there, an ammo depot in another district of Kherson region was also destroyed. It says uh, UKR's position saying that they saw very good results. Such strikes not only interrupt the logistic chains of the area, but it also affects the morale of the occupants saying that everybody's bummed out. They're kicking rocks and they're just, they're uh, sabotaging themselves or shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, you know, they're just kicking rocks. Oh, darn it. Oh, I want to give up. That's, that's really what they're doing over there. That's all Vladian soldiers are just like, eh, nah, I don't want to do this. I want to go home. I want to watch TikTok. Dex, let's get our next caller on. We have, looks like, Pete. Pete is going to talk about intel about Georgia Guidestones. And sounds like he had a calling from God to destroy them. 
Pete, uh, you, we're, we're gonna, it looks like it's going to take a second for you to get in. If you haven't already, make sure to go over and check out Energy. Uh, this whole studio is powered by an Energy Flex 1500. It's how I do interrupted, uh, uninterrupted power supply. Uh, this is one of the most impressive solar generators out there. It is actually one of the only, it is the only uh, solar generator that you can get an EMP shield to protect it. Uh, again, that is something that you can get from EMP Shield, and I believe you can even get it from them. Uh, this is a very, very flexible generator, uh, and it is absolutely silent, meaning it will not have uh, a single sound coming out of it. No one will be able to hear it from three blocks away. I cannot stress how important that is, especially uh, if SHTF does happen. People are going to be desperate. People are going to be listening for those generators. If you've ever had power go out, especially during winter when it's snowy, uh, you can hear from half a mile away when somebody has a generator. Uh, this does not take eight out eight dollar to fourteen billion dollar a gallon gas. It takes sun. Uh, you can also charge it just kind of like your battery banks that you might have for your cell phone. You can charge it on uh, with the regular plug-in, or you can even get a quick charger that charges the entire battery in about four and a half hours. Uh, again, that battery is a thousand watts. Uh, they, they do it so it's very easy to do the math on. Each battery is a thousand watt hours. So when you take that, say if you have a phone charger of four watts, then you know you can just divide 1,000 by four and you know how many hours that's gonna run. Uh, it's very easy and then you can add on an external, uh, you can add, add in additional batteries. I shouldn't say external. Almost all the other companies where you're adding batteries or you're able to stack batteries, they have huge, just, you know, uh, as, as thick as a pole wires going from each one and then connecting them. This is actually built so they can be stacked on top of each other and you can do up to five in a stack and then you can actually go up to 96 uh, batteries. So you can do it in stacks of five and basically make an entire wall of these. So it is an amazing system. It is one of the most professional solutions for, uh, you know, when your power goes out. This is an amazing, amazing system. It's also portable. So if you just take it with one or two or even three batteries, you could lift it, put it on the back of your truck. You can take it cabin. You can take it to work. You can power your drills with it. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, heck, you, uh, we even used it to power a, uh, what do you call it, a, a projector. And we did a uh, movie in a park with uh, with our friends the last weekend. So it was really cool that we could we were able to do that. Uh, but again, marfuglenews.com slash energy. This is the best part through the Fugle fam uh, be, uh, because we are, you know, we found them through EMP Shield and stuff. They worked months on getting us these sale packages. So there's upwards of $170 off only through us. Uh, these are packages tailored directly to the Fugle fam. So you get upwards of $170 off when you get these. Uh, again, th there's different packages. I would highly recommend getting their foldable, portable uh, solar panels. You put those out. It's just plug and play. There's no fancy wiring you just put them out plug it in and you've got power going and if you're using the power and have the panels going it's like yeah, you're keeping it charged at the same time so again awesome awesome thing marfuglenews.com slash energy with an eye make sure to use the code marfugal if you do want to get those savings all right and then dex it looks like we have pete on the phone so let's uh let's get him on pete you're live on marfugal news Hi, Adam. How's it going? I'm doing good. So, so what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is Pete. We had two Pete's. We had a Pete before you. No, I got him back on. We, yeah. we got it fixed, Adam. Okay, perfect. So, what's happening, Pete? Well, I just felt compelled to call you, and I tried to call last week after that Georgia Guidestones thing happened. And, I, you know, I've got some testimony to give that might make you think I'm crazy or cuckoo, but uh, I assure you I'm not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And uh just wanted to tell you that uh, those were destroyed. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You cut, it, you, you cut out there for three, a second. Three, three. <clears throat> What's that? You cut out there for a second. You said you did something? I, I said I believe that they were destroyed under the guidance of God uh, because God had ordered me to destroy them. 
you're saying that God told you to destroy them? Yeah, right after CV in 2020, um, God spoke to me and had ordered me to destroy them. And I was actually going to, I was supposed to do it this month, but someone else did it. Okay. Uh, let me ask, how did, how did he tell you in a dream? And so you were, you're, you're saying you didn't do this, but you were told to, to do it. I was, I was ordered by God to do it. Um, I was in Vietnam. I was married to a Vietnamese woman there and my marriage was failing and I was on the, on the floor on my knees praying and, you know, begging and asking God why that was, you know, happening, why the marriage was failing. And, you know, I had a kind of a private conversation with him praying and all of a sudden I had a vision of the stones and God spoke and said, destroy them. And when I opened my eyes, there was a glow. When I opened my eyes, the glow was still there and then it went away. And when I came back, you know, that was my commandment that I had to do that. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, I've got nothing to gain by, by telling this. And I just well, felt compelled would, that I had to tell you guys. How would you have done it? If you were going to do what? it, how, how would you have done it? Would you have used explosives like well, they did? No, the plan that I had, I, I don't want to go into it. I mean, I, I guess they can't really, if they want to arrest me, they can arrest me, do whatever. I, I didn't commit the crime, but I was supposed to use, you know, some of those prepaid debit cards and I was going to use a, four, a 50 foot, what I call a hydro hoe, the same thing they use to level it. And I was going to knock the top off, take the bucket and chop each stone in the middle to bust it. And then I was going to, take there's a um a time capsule there i was going to dig that up and leave that for somebody to hopefully read and see what it said and then i was going to take an electric e-bike and i was it was a folding e-bike and i was going to use that uh to get there and as a getaway to get out of sight of the cameras because i didn't want to use my car or anything you know oh, anything that's goodness. easily trackable well no i okay well Fair enough. So this was just something, do you think that they're evil? Is that, is that why, or did you know anything about the, the claims that they were evil before that? Or did this just well, came randomly? I, I knew of this. I knew of the stones and I never felt comfortable with the first commandment on them. And my belief has always been that that's a legally binding contract written in stone. And if they weren't destroyed, then, you know, in, in law, they have this thing called latches. And if you don't, you know, speak up for yourself and, you know, object to something that's a violation of your rights, then you lose those rights. So it was always my belief that they needed to be destroyed or something needed to be done. But I never expected that God would speak to me and, and ask me to do that, you know. And then about one week before this, whoever blew them up, I was actually begging God not to, not to make me do that because my hope is that someday, you know, think I will, you know, be reunited with my, reunited with my wife. And, you know, I, I know that destroying those would, would ruin my life. Um, and by the way, do you know, uh, do we have an update Dex? Did they ever, did they catch the person who did it or do they, are they still looking or is there any, you know, that's quite uh quite insane. Well, I'm glad you didn't do it and I'm glad you didn't get yourself in trouble. Um, I don't think you're, I, I don't, I don't think it's crazy in today's day and age. I mean, look at everything that's happening. Um, I mean, it would be kind of, I, what would you get charged for? Would you get charged for vandalism? Like it's not, it's not. I, well, I would, that's the thing that, you know, I know a little bit about the law. Uh, it's kind of iffy on, you know, what they would do because that's, I, I believe it's private property. Yeah. Um, someone owns that property and they think that there's a certain individual that had set those up, but they would have to come forward, whoever the owner is, to prosecute you you have the right to face your, your accusers in court, you know? 
So whoever set that up, whoever is the owner, would actually have to come forward and prosecute. Well, I think it's know, the with county. The prosecution. I think it's the county owns it now. Dex, uh, you you're from Georgia. Uh, you knew about the whole thing before anybody. So yeah, I don't. What, I don't think they've they've found anybody, um, or they've you know uh, pointed a finger or indicted or have anybody of interest yet outside of the car um, and the video they released of somebody running up to it and leaving something. Um, I do recall though that after it was created, at some point it was everything was donated or given to the prop as a property of the county. And the county was then responsible for maintaining it or, or at least protecting it. That's why they put their cameras up. The cameras were uh, wired into the, the local, um, I'm assuming, a sheriff department or something. I don't know what if they use police or sheriffs there, but probably sheriff department for the county. Um, and that that was uh, who, you know, basically monitored it if anything happened. You know, if they saw something on camera, they would send somebody out. Um, but, yeah, my understanding, it was uh, Elbert County. It was It was given to them. Um, and didn't and they have a weird agreement? They had a weird agreement where the person who was farming there didn't have to yeah, pay they, or something. They bought the land from a farmer, and um, they gave the uh, they gave the the farmer lifetime rights for their cattle to graze on the land. Um, so that was part of the deal why they they convinced the farmer to sell them the land was and then gave them lifetime rights for grazing. So they could use the land; they just have to pay for it anymore, and they got the money for it. So basically, yeah, they, well, they, yeah that's not real fishy to me. Yeah, and the fact that the county owned it, why wouldn't the county just demolish it in the first place if it attracts seedy people in their opinions? They said that it attracted all these theorists or whatever. Why wouldn't they just knock it down themselves way before? Why, why even have them dis, you know, have it destroyed this way? It's like they were keeping it up on. Well, they were upkeeping it. They were they were monitoring yeah. it. Yeah. It's weird. There, there's some, some people that, I don't know if it's rumor or what, but there's some stuff floating around that they were supposed to add another layer or ring of those stones around that one to make it even bigger. Have you ever heard that? No, I did not. You mean originally or later on? They were just going to pop up with it overnight. Supposedly, and I don't know, you know, I just heard this floating about, I can't remember, but supposedly there was, supposed to be another layer of stones added, you know, outside of those. So those were going to stay, but there was going to be another layer supposedly after um, all the things were accomplished, like the depopulation agenda and all that. So I do believe that you had this thought in your brain. Uh, but I, like I said, I'm glad that you were not able to do it because someone else did it and you are scot-free and again, you can't get in trouble for saying that you wanted to do something that somebody already did. But yeah, that's it. It's definitely uh, I, I went, when I saw in the thing and it said he had a calling from God to destroy them, but didn't do it. I was thinking, man, this this is going to be an interesting call uh, for sure. Uh, well, Pete, we're way over time, but this was such a fascinating you know, subject. It's like I, I could have talked that whole episode last week about this because the whole thing is weird. Well, the, I, the whole thing I is just call, off. But I, I couldn't get in last week. And, you know, I just with the 333, I just felt like, you know, I, I was compelled to tell you guys this because to me, this, you know, it, it just solidifies to me that this was an act of God. Well, maybe it was like in the movies, like in uh, what what is the movie that just came out? Um, the man from Toronto where they put out a hit uh, and they just, they sent it to all the hitman or like, uh, in fact, in Mandalorian, they did the same thing. They told all the bounty hunters, like go for this guy. And they all got the little, uh, alarm dinger going off. Uh, well, the same thing happened here. All these people got a calling to go do it. And somebody was like, I'm doing it. And, uh, apparently they did it to the point where they, they're not being found. So pretty, pretty insane stuff. Well, Pete. Uh, wonderful, wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for calling. Um, I'm glad. I'm very, I'm very glad that you didn't have to do anything, and and uh, I hope you don't do anything in the future either. I'll just say that. Well, I just, I'm, I'm saying, you know, this is what God had ordered me to do, and like I said, it was. I'm not sitting here with a book trying to plot and plan things against um, the country or anything. No, you know, you, it's just 
at worst, you would have gotten uh, destruction of property and and vandalism of an item. They're slab stones. It's not like it's a, a building or anything. But yeah, I get you. Well, Pete, yeah. Well, I believe that I believe the elites would have probably had me killed. You know, if if or after they caught me. You know. So. Well, we'll see what happens to whoever be- whoever did it. Uh, Pete, we're way over yeah. time though. I apologize. I got, I got to let you go. But um, if you want to say one more thing All before right. you go, go ahead and and say your bye or a shout out to somebody if you want. No, I got nothing else to say. Just you know, I love my country, but you know, I can't say that I support things like the Guidestones. You know, I th- I think a lot of us agree with you on that one. Uh, most people thought that it was right. it was pretty weird and uh, pretty disgusting in in some people's opinions. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, thank you, Pete. And uh, bless you. Have a wonderful night. And uh, again, thank you. <clears throat> I just wonder if we'll have other people that say the same thing that they, you know, they felt like they were compelled to do something like that. Um, again, like, what would you actually be charged with if that guy gets caught? It is county property, but it's destroying a slab. If there were people around, this is out in the middle of like nowhere. So it's kind of like the crime would be, I guess for the person who did do, would be like, you know, ex- doing big explosives. Um, is that a felony? Did whatever they did, because that must have been a big kind of explosive thing that they did to take that out. As we had callers last week on it. <clears throat> Uh, they said uh, that, you know, they know they worked at a quarry. I think somebody said that they worked at a quarry and it takes a lot of power to take a, a big slab like that out. Uh, so whoever used it, what did they use? Did they use something that's highly illegal to do it? That I guess that's my question. Um, but now it's gone. They completely mowed it down and it is level. So what a trip. Uh, Dex, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting one. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, one other thing that has been updated since then, I was just trying to find out any little bits of information that have come out. I know a lot of people have been talking about the time capsule uh, that was there, but apparently, uh, according to news sources and specifically Fox 5 Atlanta, uh, they said officials with Elbert County uh, Road Department dug down six feet and used a tape measure to ensure accuracy uh, under the location where it was marked because it said there was a time capsule there six feet deep and they basically dug in and found nothing. There was nothing there. So they actually did not find a time capsule, even though there was a lot of people saying there was a whole lot of things that people said were found in the time capsule, uh, all sorts of crazy things like an eight track of Saturday night fever and, you know, other, you know, several dozen quaaludes or things like that. Those were all just theories that were floating around. But according to the authorities, they said they could never, they, they looked and couldn't find anything in that spot that it was marked. So what if it was in the damn rock and the guy took it after, or did the guy return after it blew up? No. Uh, According to the video, well, I'd say no, but they didn't say that. Um, They've they've only showed video of a person running up to them and leaving something and running away. But they Uh, they looked like they went multiple times. They left it out, though. There's no video. But there's... At the location, there is a marker on the ground that says there's a time capsule at the spot six feet or, you know, so many feet underground here. Oh, my Um, gosh. You know what that means? That means people are going to go out and hunt if they officially say that they didn't find anything. Or what if they did find something and they say, oh, yeah, there was nothing there. But really, there was like some sort of message or something that tells our future or something. Uh People Where did are somebody go get it there? earlier back in the day? You know, it's it's been around for a long time. I wonder if somebody got, you know, extracted that time capsule a long time ago. And what if it had a billion dollars in cash or something? Um, <clears throat> and that's why, you know, somebody went out and did it or something. I, I don't know. If I, I heard from multiple people and they said it like it was fact that, you know, they, oh, they found a, this stupid thing or that stupid thing. And it was like a Playboy magazine or um, but I, so according to them that that's not verified for, the, and why would the government, if they, this is what's weird. If it's the government that's taking it down, why would they dig to get the time capsule? You would think they would just roll it over. They don't have time to pay people to dig and look for something that's, that's just for like fun. That isn't physically like, Hey, we got to make this safe. They would do the bare minimum. 
if this was done and they knew what was in the time capsule and it was like, you know, they knew it was something, they would have not spent the money and paid somebody by the hour to lift up the dirt and dig. I mean, it would only take a few minutes with a big tool, but for them to say, they actually told, tell us that they dug down a very specific amount they made sure to do it exactly to, to where this thing was supposed to be, and there was nothing there. Why? It, it just makes you think. And then look at the times we're in with CERN and, and stuff being reactivated. Uh, the Abe, uh, former, minute, former prime minister, getting trying to get taken out. Uh, Vlad's right-hand man being attempted to take him out. You've got the Ayatollah, the supreme leader, saying that uh, putting on his Twitter videos of taking out our leader. You've just got all this stuff going on. Uh, the last three years of absolute scandal and just crap and a worldwide event happening at the same time. Like we're living in the craziest times of history and I think it's not going to it's not going to just go and you know be normal again. We're done with that. Our our world is fundamentally changed. Just going to a Walmart where you used to go through checks, you know, check lines. Now it's all self checkout with one place that takes cash in the whole place. Why? And people don't believe that there's an agenda to get rid of cash. Like, come on. Now, every store is keeping the stuff that we needed for that that time when it was really scary and nobody had the. Mm -mm. And now, everything has changed. The way that all businesses have virtually changed. Dex, did you hear about the viral from uh, it was a lawyer that put out a viral about using those self checkouts in Walmart and her recommendations? Did you hear about that? No. What is it? Is it so? Good? I, I'm trying to summarize it uh, the best I, from my memory, but <laughs> she said you shouldn't use self checkouts because there's a high rate of people getting con getting charged uh, with shoplifting. Um, of course, there are the ones that are intentionally doing it, right? But there's still a lot a lot of people that either forget something on the bottom of the cart or they just don't scan correctly. But the system is so good, it flags, tags, identifies you, et cetera. Um, and, and usually, you know, yeah, you can get things resolved, but it comes at a cost, right? Like showing up to court, hiring a lawyer, going through, you know, finding records, proving that you, you know, weren't intentionally doing something. And they also said there was a high number of uh, of instances where somebody didn't even do anything, but they still were charged because the product had shown up as being um, one that had been lifted. So they go back and they look through security and find people that bought that product, and then they accuse them and and go after them. And then the the third point I think they made was don't use cash because if you use which I know a lot of people love to use cash for other reasons, uh, but her excuse was hey if you use cash then you don't really have much of a way of proving what you did. Uh, you don't have a record of it, right? Um, so, you know, well, which of course is, is the reason why you don't use cash or why, why you do use cash is you don't want a record. But in this scenario, using self-checkout with cash caused a problem because then if you did get wrapped up into this potential uh, accusation of shoplifting, you had a much harder time proving your case. So it was really fascinating. And our video went viral. I think it was one of those TikTok videos, but it was a lawyer basically saying, avoid the self-checkout and here's why. Wow. So... Um, that is a trip. And they, if you didn't notice, and I didn't notice for the longest time, uh, Walmart not only has a camera inside the scanner, but it also has a camera at your face and then it has a camera looking straight down and then it switches, uh, the person that sits there at the 40 vestibule self checkout on both sides of the store, uh, they're watching. And what happens is the machine's algorithm automatically, if, if say, if you, uh, if you swipe something across it and you go, whoosh, and you have two items or you go like this and it doesn't or it, even if you just swipe twice with the same item even if you're trying to ring it up twice it will go hey something weird's going on here and it will show your uh vestibule your scan on their screen now it doesn't do it at all but the one that i saw was in uh what was it bellingham i was somewhere else and i was surprised that they were it's sitting there intently watching the screen and it would flip to somebody and as you flip to it I'm sitting there waiting in line and it's on a big screen TV and it did show everything they're buying it showed the top down of their hands and everything else and I was like whoa I said I didn't even know about that camera and it's it's a dome camera I mean it's very visible when you look at it but then again when you're just walking in and you don't go there much it's like it just looks like a, a like a pole that says hey this stand is open 
So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Target has a forensics lab. So if you go to the self-checkout through uh, Target as well, uh, or if you just steal from Target, there was a whole article put out about how they do theirs. Uh, they have forensics team in California that goes through all this data. And what happens is they'll wait, just like many other big box stores, they'll wait if you buy a dollar DVD or something, right? You buy that dollar DVD or you steal a DVD, a dollar DVD, they'll wait until you have over five months. You just keep stealing. They'll just let you walk right out. But they'll be able to tag and facial recognize who you are. And then you grab $500 DVDs. Once you hit that felony mark, then they prosecute you. And now they're having it throughout CV. They were having such a hard time prosecuting people that they the only way that they wanted to do it is if it was organized crime. So they would wait until they stole them and then sell, sold them to somebody else or gathered with other people who were stealing. And most of you have already seen this. In my area, I cannot believe it. It's crazy. Uh, about 10.30 at night, if you ever go into a store, you'll see there's multiple people in the store. They grab carts, they fill them up, and they walk right out the emergency exit. Uh, if you work at Target, you know, holler in the chat. Let me know at about 10.45, how many times do you hear that emergency alarm go off of somebody walking out that door with a cart full of Legos? And by the way, Legos is the biggest thing. There are no Legos on the shelf in where I live because Legos are expensive. Uh, they are out on the shelf. There's something they can throw in and they're very easy to sell. So uh, they can, you know, post them wherever else. Um, that's why a lot of the Legos are locked up now. That's why a lot of them have these crazy spider web things on them with chains on it uh, because it is the most stolen thing. So it's it's crazy where our world is right now, and really to step back and to look at what is happening right now is it's very scary. But I want you guys to feel empowered that if you are prepping even just a tiny bit, if you're getting an extra can of food and extra water, that you are doing what's right, and you can feel better that if you've been doing this or if you're just starting right now, you do have time. So please, you know, you never know when when something's going to go down, but if if you do something that doesn't affect you, your ability to live and you are using your excess $5 a week and going and buying prep, you'll feel better about a lot of this stuff because really there's a lot of bad things coming our way and most people that that realize what's happening are looking at preparing. So uh, Dex, thank you for your service today. I appreciate you. Do you want to go over the web only content? Absolutely. So head over to morefugelnews.com and click on the thumbnail for the show and scroll down past all the news we just gave you and you'll get to the yellow bar that says overflow. That's where the rest of the story is. Lots of, of great content put together there. If you're on YouTube, open the description and just click on show notes. It's the first link. It's right there. Um, first off, there's a good article there about some apps to avoid. I know we talked about this yesterday, but I found another uh, make use of, I think is the name of the website. They had written a, an article about three apps to avoid. If you care about privacy and two of which I, I thought were really interesting. One was obviously uh, the book uh, and all of their collection of apps, but the second one was weather apps. Uh, so, and that just got me thinking how much I despise my weather apps because they're so uh, slow and annoying, but uh, you feel like you have to have them. But there was a, uh, a, a review in there about how much data that they actually collect. Um, so go check that out. Uh, if you're concerned about your privacy, as well as, other things we've got stuff about G that didn't make it in the show there again this is where the overflow happens so some stuff happening with the uh, dumping of, of US treasuries um, some updates on the lithium rush in South America uh, obviously for battery technology um, more more statements coming out from Rogan uh, he's been in the news quite a bit here lately so we want to know what's what's rocking the boat there um, some uh, some arrests of uh, Congress in um, uh, around the Supreme Court um, and someone uh, looking like they are allegedly looking like they were handcuffed, but they really weren't. Um, at least that's what the uh, New York Post was reporting. That and so much more. Uh, lots of other information there. Um, you know, head over to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, and then scroll down to that overflow. You'll get the rest of the story. Uh, man, there's a, like an entire show's worth of content there as well. Um, and then when you're done there, if you're looking for the callers, all of the caller information is right below. Just scroll down. It's already updated. If, if it's not on your screen, then refresh, Adam. But all, all the caller information is there. You can get to the videos that uh, those that had called in with videos. Uh, 
as well as uh, any other information. It's always on our website, marthaGoogleNews.com. And I want to point out there are a few highlights here. Uh, by the way, thank you so much to Mystic Truth Ninja. Thank you for the Ninja Gini tonight over on D Live. I so much appreciate that. R Tate, the Outlaw Josie Wales, Keyshara. I was Project Stargate Bravo seven five seven three, Paycor, uh, Keyshara. That um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to duck duck go that. Uh, Vicky K and of course Kimbria, Michelle K, Chance Powden. Thank you, everybody else. Um, and then also over on YouTube, I'm gonna I have a few people to thank here in just a second. I want to point out a couple real big highlights. This is huge. CIA director issues warning after possible noose is found near facility. Something weird is going on there. Um, I also want to uh, show you this. Uh, well, first of all, L.A. unhoused advocates. They're getting so politically correct, they can't even call you homeless anymore. They're saying unhoused. My question is, what about the people that never had a house? They weren't unhoused because they never had a house to begin with. They're homeless. Uh, when uh, I was briefly homeless, and again, it's homeless. It's, you know, it's not unhoused. Um, they're just getting so PC about everything. It's insane. Uh by the way, P U.S. losing ground to, to Xi and Vlad in South American lithium rush, that is actually a bigger deal than most people think. But the uh, Xi has dumped over $100 billion in U.S. Treasury in the last six months. Wake up, people. Look at the, the enemy across the water. This is, it, this is not going in a good direction, people. And it's not to scare you. It's to prepare you. Please open your eyes. Stop thinking that it's, you know, you you can be optimistic. You can be uh, absolutely, you know, looking forward to the future. You can be positive about things. But you can also see just a, a open fact sitting in front of your face. Look at the, the, I guess, the sway that that country is having on everything. If you go against them, people come out and attack you. It's absolutely absurd. Uh, we know this. So, uh Thank you guys for going over to the website. And uh, again, make sure to go over and check out any of the affiliates. Those help us, as of course. Um, when you go and buy any of the products mentioned tonight, that helps support us directly. And again, we're independent. We don't have a multi-channel network. We don't have, uh, you know, we don't we don't have anything backing us up. We don't have a multi-billion dollar company backing us up. You guys are backing us up. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody over on uh, D Live. Thank you to the mods, Gem Gem Chance Jammer. Uh, again, thank you, April. Thank you uh, again for uh, going over there and, and popping in. And uh, all over on YouTube, thank you, Derek McLovin. Uh, thank you, Zen Wen, Stephen McMahon, Janet Ruth Haynes, Mid Mofro, Be Real Beast, <clears throat> uh, Q Doggy. Thank you so much, and uh, of course, Angulo. And I. Hate to butcher your name, especially with the huge support. Thank you, Angulo. Angelo, I, I guess it's Angulo. 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 Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting Independent. Now it's time for the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shout out. Oh, I screwed it up. By the way, last night, uh, my one, my, well, he's, he's 19 months. So he's almost two. Um, he just did not sleep last night. And uh, it was just horrendous having like, it's like he was, when he was first born, he just kept waking up. And uh, our son who they're trying to pre-diagnose is on the spectrum. We still don't know. He is de uh, ba behind in develop, uh, development, and they're saying, in fact, I just took a photo of the e uh, e Epoch Times or the Enoch Times or whatever, or um, Epic Times. Uh, they just did a piece on how kids born during CV uh, were actually developmentally uh, behind. And we've, they've been saying it for a couple of years. Now they actually have proof behind it. My son is not, um, he's, he's starting to say things like banana and stuff, but he was making sounds and things like that. But he wasn't, he, he was saying mama and dada at six months old before he ended up getting uh, one of a, a tree three, you know, thing that they get. 
He got those, and then all of a sudden he went from mama, dada, baba, backwards. But anyways, he's uh, when he gets up, he gets so excited, and he starts screaming, and he goes, va, 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 va. It doesn't matter if it's 2 in the morning or 4 in the morning. It's just, va, 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 va. So we, uh, we're going to wait it out because I believe there are others out there, too, and you guys have told me, some of you that have had kids during this, a lot of kids are going through the same thing. So we'll hold out. If, uh, but if, if he is on the spectrum, I'm prepared for that, too, because we have family that is autistic. And I am excited either way. I'm excited if he's if he is uh, on the autism spectrum uh, because he's already super smart. He's going to be a genius, probably be a, uh, a savant, if anything. Uh, so I'm excited to see. It's kind of like, you know, you're excited to see w- where they go. So thank you, guys. I appreciate you, TV9 and everybody else uh, for popping in. Love you guys. Have a great night. Uh, be safe and be back tomorrow. Be prepared and morph out. Let's make a new one for Angulo. Big shout out to Irish Prepper, wherever you are. An Irish Rebel and uh, EOD Vet. And Steve McQueen.